if I'm not mistaken, aniline is like a painted finish, right? I did a blog post on this. Um, yeah. The way I think of it is uh, the difference between aniline leather and a pigmented leather is this sort of a spectrum. Oh. I, I, let me let me rephrase that. It could be naked or pigmented. And that's the spectrum. So aniline is like just above naked. Uh, okay. Naked means there's no stains applied to it. That's like just the the skin naturally with whatever tannins and oils that you put into it. And then pigmented on the other end is like full opaque, lots of solids in the finish where you can't see through it. It's kind of like putting, um, like if you imagine a skin of leather having little holes in it for the, the hair holes, it's kind of like, paving over that like if you're gonna make an asphalt on a road you're just like covering all of it so you don't get all those potholes and like all the naturalness of the road like that's what you're doing when you're fully pigmenting it i did do a blog post on this also if you're into that um let's see if i can find what it's titled it's called what is aniline leather <laughs> okay yes. and i do i did some like close-up photos of what it looks like when you start adding finish so the spectrum i gave here is the crust which is like naked mm -hmm. aniline, which is just like a little bit of stain to sort of like level it out. And then semi aniline where they put like a drop of pigment into those stains and then like a full pigment, which looks like paint. Okay. And, and the best way that, that I've come across to think about uh, leather finishing is to think about wood finishing. So you can take a piece of wood for your kitchen table and you can cover it in like a white paint. And it, you can tell that like, it's a little bit like wood, but it looks like paint or you can apply any color stain to it and you still see more of that like natural character of the wood. There's more highs and lows and colors. There's a little bit more texture. And uh, you know, now you're just putting a color on it. That's the difference between a, a pigmented full finish and like a aniline, like stain, just a stained piece of wood or a stained piece of leather. Okay. That makes, that makes perfect sense. That's and it's awesome. a weird, it's a weird word aniline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, aniline. It it is strange. I've had to learn like, you know, what's what's a what's a pull up leather? What's a, what's a Chrome Excel? And the interview that you did with the uh, the chemical engineer was probably the best thing I've ever seen. Like, like because he was explaining how you infuse metal into leather to make it a stronger product. And I never knew that Chrome Excel meant they were literally infusing metal into the leather. Like that was yeah. the biggest thing I ever heard. I didn't that. That interview with uh, Esteban, I actually watched again kind of recently. I was kind of cringing at how like poor the quality of it was. But yeah. uh, I actually met with Esteban a month ago and he and I want to do another video like that. Because you're right, like these are like I didn't know that information. And when he connected, when he said Wolverine as like a joke, yeah. like that really hit me, which is why I led the video with that. It's like, oh, I get, okay, it's both. It's like human and metal, like it's organic and metal. That's yeah. that's chrome tan leather. Like, okay, that makes sense. Like you get some more performance out of it. It yeah. does tend to be, it tends, the chrome tan leathers, this is maybe where your where your buddy, uh, almost vintage style. <laughs> yeah, Jake, Jake. Yes. I think this is where Jake is kind of uh, down on chrome tan leather and I tend to, to generally agree with him is it the chrome tan stuff tends to be like a little bit more it, and it's on purpose like they're trying to make it a little bit more performance based mm -hmm. i tend to agree like more often than not it tends to be like a little less natural looking however yeah. like i hate to say it because the chrome excel stuff i have is the most comfortable stuff i have by yeah. far and i i don't know wh why uh but it just is right so early on in my days researching style form, they used to talk about how shell cordovan doesn't stretch at all. And that is a hundred percent true. It does not. Right. Stretch. Like I have some here. It doesn't stretch. If you were to stretch it, you'd actually crack it. So there's no stretching shell. So the way that they fit on day one, they basically fit forever. Um, right. whereas, whereas Chrome XL does stretch. So for example, like these, these are eight and a half. I could have sized down to an eight. Yeah, if I size down to an eight, they'd probably fit perfectly. Now they fit kind of loose because they've broken in so much. They've it's created more room inside the inside the you know right volume. So, you know what? I had that same experience with my diesel boot. I love that. So this I find this dichotomy very interesting. The natural Chrome Excel or the uh, Dune Chrome Excel diesel boots that I have from Grant Stone. 
mm-hmm. when I got them, I was like, oh my God, like this is a game changer. These are so comfortable out of the box. Yeah. Viberg, the absolute opposite. Like these are the least comfortable ever. Yeah. And it's interesting how that has shifted as I've worn them. And I kind of, I don't know if it's a Grant Stone thing or a Chrome Excel thing or like the size I ordered from Grant Stone, but they, the Grant Stones have actually become a, like mildly less comfortable where the Vibergs have like, I don't know how many times more comfortable they are, but they've sort of gone in different directions, which is quite interesting. I will, I think if I were to do it again, I would get a smaller size in the Chrome Excel and mm-hmm. like, like it would suck for a little bit and then just like break them in to it. Cause right. uh, to give a, a physical example of it is uh, we do Chrome Excel belts at Ashland and I wore my belt pretty hard. Like I'll, I'll torque it closed. Mm-hmm. Um, you could get like three or four inches to stretch on a Chrome Excel belt, even in that honk and thick nine ounce stuff. So yeah. when you're talking like five, six ounce on a shoe, like you can stretch that pretty far. True. Um, so it will give around your foot in a pleasant way. Right. That's true. I ordered a belt from Pigeon Tree Crafting and Natural Chrome XL. These are also Grant Stone Diesel Boots and Natural Chrome XL. And, um, as soon as I got that belt from Isaac, I put it on. I couldn't actually cinch it shut. I was like, Isaac, dude, you sent me the wrong size. Um, you know, this has never happened. He's like, dude, don't worry about it. That's going to stretch like three inches. Sure enough, like I wore it for the first two days. It sucked. It was like cinching my waist. It was like cutting off my blood circulation. Wow. But it stretched so much. And now it's now it fits perfectly. He's like, dude, I, I size it. What I do is I stretch it and then I measure it. Cause that's wow. what going to end up as. So yeah. So that's how my belt wound up was the perfect size. Now the first couple wears. Yes, absolutely. It was, it was interesting. Bad, right? So yeah. Chrome Excel stretches. Absolutely. Big time. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Would you like to know why it stretches? Yes, I would. <laughs> this is, this is a great uh, example of like how crazy Horween is. Yeah. So yeah, you might not know this, but leather tanneries sell leather based on the square footage, like the area uh, of the hide. So they're taking these infinite high, uh, infinitely variable hides and trying to make it in the same thing. But during that process, they, they will change in shape and in, in size. The thing about the Chrome Excel that is very unique is they are air drying it and they're not, um, uh, there's multiple ways to dry leather. Horween chooses the, the stupidest one of all for Chrome Excel. It's stupid in terms of like making money, but like brilliant in terms of like making a great product. You can, uh, I'll break down the drying methods, Uh, air dry it. You can just hang it. There's a method called toggling where you clip hooks on the leather and you put it on a frame and sort of like stretch it in all directions. There's another dryer called a vacuum dryer where they decrease the pressure and suck out moisture. And because you lower the pressure, you can you can dry veg tan leathers at a lower heat as to not cook them. And then there's a, a dryer called a pasting unit where they take literal glue and glue this leather to a frame and they sort of like spread it out on these frames. And all those have different uh, characteristics. Uh, and all of them, with the exception of air drying, tend to make the leather larger. <laughs> Whereas air drying, it's like drying your clothes. You might notice if you ever dry your jeans in the air, you'll notice like, man, those like really shrunk on me. The same thing happens in the leather. So Horween is actively losing money by air drying Chrome Excel because they find it makes a better product. When we talk about the break, you see uh, like some sections of the hide are a little bit loose. That again, those tend to be the, the the lower density fiber sections of the hides that create this sort of pebbly look. And I yeah. find it to be like unpleasant and most people agree it's not smooth. It's um, it's not consistent with the rest of the leather. It's not inherently bad. I, I, if I had it on a toe of my shoe, I would be pretty bummed out. And the guidance that I give to people is whoever created that uh, piece of footwear for you. If you find uh, some looseness like that, ask the footmaker if that's in their normal standards and just say like, hey, you know, I noticed this it kind of bums me out. It's like, is this num- normal for you guys or did I get a weird one? Because 99% of the time, if you come at somebody in a reasonable way, they're going to hook you up and they're going to get you something that you like. Nobody's trying to screw you over, especially me. <laughs> like, I'm, uh, That's my guarantee for everybody. It's like, I don't, I don't rip people off. And I'd imagine um, if, if that's Alden, like if you come at Alden and say like, look, I got this, it's kind of bumps me out. Like, 
is this normal? And they might say, yeah, you know, like that's normal. Uh, sorry, you gotta, you gotta live with it. Or they might say, you know what, that one got away from us. Like we made a mistake. Let's make it right. So they might do that for you. But Horween air dries the Chrome Excel because think about that. The, the delamination happens because the leather is, is not as tight in, in terms of like the microscopic fiber uh, of the hide itself. But by air drying it, it's just like on your jeans where it shrinks back in. You're sort of making it a little bit tighter and more dense. And that's why they do that. It, it loses them on each side of leather. You're losing like four to six square feet times 10 bucks. So they're losing like $60 a hide uh, or a side on each piece of Chrome Excel that they sell. Wow. So they're not optimized for that's not environmentally friendly on that scale where they're saying like how many square feet of leather did you make per kilowatt hour of electricity? Like they're losing there too. They're just doing it because it's a better product. Mm -hmm. um, so that's pretty, to me like that really, to me is a testimony of like what Horween's up to. It's like, yeah. they don't care. <laughs> like they're just going to make it better. Uh, it's, that's, I mean, talk about 60 bucks. Like that's, that's a lot like that's yep. that's like 20 percent yield that they're losing right per unit yeah that is yeah. crazy that's a well, lot it's a testament to how much they actually just stand by their product you know that's that's american workmanship right there my friend that hasn't changed it it hasn't changed it in 100 years <laughs> It's, it's like, I think a part of the fear of changing things is Skip is worried. About, he's said this to me and I don't think he's joking. He's like always worried about his like grandfather coming in to like haunt his, haunt him for like ruining his, his leather. <laughs> and there have been ghost sightings at the tannery. Uh, people have seen Arnold Horween uh, Jr. Skip's dad. Uh, the ghost of him they've seen him up in the finishing department no kidding yeah i haven't but Man. multiple people have reported that that is amazing so tell me more about that because i'm into the paranormal so uh, um <laughs> well ghosts. like the, the only story i have is uh arnie as uh, the name he went by arnold horween jr and in fact on the on the private stock sale we did we had a wallet that he designed called the we're calling it the jr uh because he designed it you know in the 70s but he used to uh, smoke a lot and he would stand there kind of like he would like stand there like this, like all the time. They just like stand there with his hands on his hips. Interesting. And that um, Frank uh, Harris, the, the finisher at Horween, told me he was locking up one night, turning off all the lights, setting the alarm. And he looked up uh, towards the other end of the floor and he saw a shadow of that pose like it's saw Arnie and he's like, for right. sure it was Arnold Horween uh, doing that pose, just like looking over his tannery. It's pretty crazy. Oh my God. That I, I haven't seen it. I mean, yeah. it is interesting. I felt something there. Um, this is, doesn't mean anything, but when you're in the tannery and it's running, there's a ton of machines on and it's humming. Like there's an energy to the building. It's like pulsing. Right. Yeah. Uh, but if like I would go in on the weekends or at nights or something and all this stuff's off, it's different. It feels like something's up. It's, it, it's, there's a lot of history there. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's something, yeah. something's up there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a hundred year. it's over a hundred years old. I can only imagine how many lingering. Well, there was a, there was a tannery there before Horween also. So it's from like the 1880s or something like that. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Horween moved locations uh, in the 30s or something like that. They they were in a different facility, uh, like down the street before okay. that. Wow. Wow. That, that's incredible because, um, yeah, I've, I've believed in, in ghosts ever since I was 14 years old. I took a tour. My family and I were, we were in Philadelphia. We took a tour of the ghost tour in downtown Philadelphia and the ghost tour guide told us I didn't believe in ghosts until I worked at the Penn State Penitentiary giving tours and so we took the go you know we took the ghost tour it was creepy whatever we said well we're going to take that Penn State Penitentiary tour tomorrow so we went to Penn State Penitentiary expecting a ghost tour 
guess what? It wasn't a ghost tour. It was just a tour of this old prison, right? And this was the same prison used in, um, it, 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 was in it was in that Brad Pitt movie. Uh, I can't remember, like, Seven Monkeys or Eleven Monkeys or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, 12 Monkeys? 12 Monkeys, yeah. A yeah. bunch of monkeys. Yeah, a bunch of monkeys, yeah, yeah, with, with <laughs> Bruce Willis and Brad Pitt. <laughs> and, um, yeah, that was the one. And so we we went there, and we're, we're taking a tour, and the tour guide is not mentioning ghosts. We're like, we thought this was a haunted ghost tour. What's going on here? You know. And so I had, it, this was back in the 90s, and I had two, I had a disposable camera with two shots left. So I took one picture of the courtyard and one picture of the tower. And uh, we left the tour kind of disappointed because we didn't hear much about ghosts. Well, when the stills came back from... No. Yeah, there's a big... I, it, like, I took a picture of the tower and in front of me, there's this big oval, like, right in front of me, like, a luminous oval directly in front of me like the size of a person that was like standing directly in front no of me. No way. Yeah, right right in front of this tower and uh my oh dad my he's a photographer he's like, "Well, let me look at the let me look at the negative and see if it that was on the negative." Sure enough, that was all that image was also on the negative. So the camera saw that whatever that was. So But you didn't see it. I didn't see it. Oh my god. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah it was very creepy it was very creepy but yeah long story short yeah i i believe in ghosts and uh yeah i'm all into that stuff i love hearing about history and i especially love hearing about ghost stories <laughs> so that's have a little camping excursion at the tannery <laughs> oh man that would be amazing yes, <laughs> out there for the night oh i wouldn't get and... you're like a double whammy of nerdery <laughs> yeah exactly boots and ghosts boots and ghosts <laughs> I think you're onto something. You could start a new show called Boots and Ghosts. Oh, like, man, could you imagine that? How amazing that would be? <laughs> I wonder. Yeah, maybe we could get a crowdfunding going for that. <laughs> <laughs> I would be more uh, in tune with the uh, the three Bs. What was it? Boots and booze and uh, what was the other one we had earlier? Oh, it wasn't the guitars. It was stuff in your room. <laughs> yeah, boots, booze, uh, jackets. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> oh, burgers, bomber jackets. Oh yeah, yeah, bomber jackets. Okay, yes, yes, guys, stuff right there. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, get yeah, man. <laughs> oh man, good stuff. No, that's fascinating though. I love hearing about Halloween members still haunting that factory. That that would make for a good like Halloween episode. You know, like, yeah. We should have a talk on Halloween about. <laughs> Let's do it. Get more stories. We need more stories from the from the Halloween tannery. That would that would just add more to the lore of the of that factory. More than is already there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I'm into it. Yeah, Let's do and, it. And actually, I wanted to ask you another question about the workers there at Halloween. So is it? So I'm always fascinated with this concept of the carpenter's door is broken, sort of a scenario. Where so I'm curious, like, are are the guys that work in the factory? Do, are they all wearing like indie boots? Or are they wearing sneakers? Like they don't care. They're just there to make money. Or are that's they tough. We talk about this a lot, or we used to talk about it a lot. Skip Horween and I about how it's like a guy working at a Lamborghini factory. It's like not everybody there's driving a Lamborghini. True. Um. So no, the and the answer is no. Uh, but what's what Skip has done is he gives the everybody that works there gets a subsidy to pay for some footwear. Uh, it has to be safety footwear for the tanneries. Um, but, you know, Skip is pretty generous. Um, I mean, he bought me a few pairs of shoes. I think actually those were boots I was wearing today. He bought for himself and he's like, ah, they don't fit me perfectly. And I, I was like, I always wanted Roy boots. So he gave me those a bunch of years ago. Yeah. So, but he, it's not just for me. Like he does that for other guys or if, you know, I've, and I've done it for people that say, hey, I saw that wallet. What is that? And I'll go, oh, well, and then next time I'll just surprise them and show up and give them one. It's it's kind of like that is like we want to share like you want, and especially Skip being the owner of that company. He wants everybody to, to like get it and appreciate like what they're doing and like understand how special it is. But the reality of it is like, you know, nobody's there's. Nobody working in the leather industry is make, making any, like nobody's getting rich. Like if you look at the cars in the parking lots, it's like, yeah, you know, we're not, we're not fancy folk. I've been driving the same car since 2008 and uh, I don't have a problem with it. I love it. I don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're just kind of like, 
I think most people just want to show up and do a good job and it's sure more money is like great, but it's not, I, I suppose I'm a little privileged to say it, so I won't, but I yeah. think a lot of the union guys could use some more money. Um, the, the wages aren't like amazing, uh, but it's very, very good for like a manufacturing job in Chicago. They're making a lot more money than minimum wage and the jobs are worth it. Like it's hard. It's really, really hard work. Um, right. So right. yeah, and they get great benefits and stuff like they have really good health care and time off and it's it's not it's not like anybody's super uh impoverished, but it's also like nobody's getting including the owners, like nobody's getting rich. Okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, that that's and that's fine. I mean that, that's probably like most industries, you know, construction or things like that. But I mean, no, that's that's great to hear, especially straight from the source, you know what I mean? Because because that, that stuff I wonder about, because I, I see videos from the inside of the factory and I see the workers and yeah, they look like very skilled craftsmen, very dedicated, happy to be there. So I'm always looking at their footwear like, does that guy have indies on? You know? <laughs> it's interesting that you said that because uh, my buddy Nick Horween had a concept. Nick's also really into photography and he, he had this concept to do um, a photo of all the guys, different shoes and boots or whatever they're wearing at work. Cool. And some of them are pretty gnarly, uh, like super beat up and just like covered in finish. Yeah. Uh, it looks crazy, but uh, I don't know if he'll ever do that. But uh, he did mention that concept. And I, maybe I should encourage him some more to do that. Yeah, for sure. And actually, what's funny is recently my wife and I, we took our, I took the in-laws over to Amish country and we were touring around and there was, we took a horse ride and one of the Amish kids, he was probably in his mid twenties, he had on a pair of boots that literally like the, like the side was gone. He yep. had worn it all the way through and he's still wearing them. He's like walking around and I'm like, like pulling. Horses. Hey, as long as it doesn't rain, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> I'm like, I have never seen boot that destroyed. Like, I yeah. feel bad. but at the same time, it was, it was kind of neat. Cause I'm like, I want to beat up some boots like that. You know, how do I get, yes, you know, like that. <laughs> So. it's it's not easy to do i i right. felt the same way yeah it's it's not easy at all part of me envies that somebody who can who can really put a hurting on a pair of boots you know i really envy that another question i wanted to ask you actually so like how how many pairs of boots do you have because you know you, you show your wallets a lot but i'm i'm always like and i'm sure your audience especially is a little bit extra interested whenever you talk about your boots because you talked about your vibers and that was a, you showed your grant stones and you showed your roy boots so i'm just curious like what what's your rotation look like you want me to go into uh boot collection yeah yeah so i'm really curious because i mean i've gone digging for your boot collection and you, you know you, you post certain pairs but you never show like the full collection so i'm, I'm really like curious what so what... if you want to be a total dork uh which i don't necessarily recommend i did a live stream in like around christmas time okay uh, of most of my collection the problem for me is like i have so much and it's like all over the place that i don't i'll forget some but um okay what i i i tend to, i have a lot of hauled and stuff i've had every pair of like their standard indie boots um which my is that a pair above you to your your right shoulder? Mm -hmm. uh, is that a four oh three or whatever? This here is the four oh five good eye sir. Four oh five. Yes sir. And that's the Chrome Excel one. Th this is a capskin tan. Cap cap yes. So I have. So that was um, the owner for Alden came into the tannery once, mm -hmm. and I was asking him about sizing and stuff, and he sized me for a pair of four oh fives okay i don't like them as much as the 403s which i believe are the chrome excel ones mm -hmm. the, the chrome excel ones are just better and over the years they've kind of changed um the leather a little bit on the 405s mm -hmm. they used to call it so they call that calfskin it's technically not and it i don't know if i should call them out on that but yeah it's a it's a calf like product that horween makes called austin Oh, is the leather it's a full grain uh it's technically waterproof for ten thousand flexes it's like a little bit of a drier vibe um 
than the Chrome XL, which is like super rich and oily. And yeah. then the craziest rich and oily one is the Kudu Chrome XL, which is like that dark brown. It has a lug sole. I had, I think those are 404s. I don't know what they are. I have a pair of those too. They're like really tough. Yes. They're, yeah. they're kind of, the problem with that Kudu Chrome XL is it's like so oily that it just like sucks up dust. They get like really dusty. But they're great because of the luxo. You can just like kind of wear it for whatever. Really? So I have all the indie boots with the exception of the shell ones. Um, a very inspirational boot for me is the Thousand Mile boot. And from Wolverine, I don't know if you have, do you have a pair of thousand mile boots? I do. Yeah, I do have one pair. I got them from guilt.com like eight years ago. Um, yeah. Gray suede. I got them for like $50. I use them as work boots. I don't, I yeah. have no pride in them. I, I beat them up. Um, yeah, but I, I do have one pair of Wolverines. Yeah. So <laughs> those, those thousand mile boots are philosophically, the same thing that I'm trying to do with Ashland. It's like, I guess most, like everything I look at on your shelf behind you is kind of the same vibe where it's yeah. like no nonsense, right? Like if you look at some more recent Cole Haan stuff, it's, they're like, well, let's put some neon green on this like side of the soul to make it different. Right. Like that I mean, that's fine. Like somebody likes that. I, I don't necessarily want extra like frills. Um, I kind of like, I, I noticed uh, my friend and I were talking about boots maybe a decade ago. And we noticed that it's hard to find like a simple good thing. And that's what I like about thousand mile boots. There's things I don't like about it too, but aesthetically the, the visual representation of that boot is like what, I'm trying to do in, in wallets. It's like, I don't want any like weird emblems. I don't want it. I just want it to be like a simple, nice thing. So that the thousand mile boots have a few pairs of those and they have a special place in my heart. I've got a pair of brown Chrome Excel. I bought my, my wife a pair of black Chrome Excel. I also have the, uh, I believe they call it Harvest, which is a, a leather from Horween called Tundra, which is a new buck. Uh, actually, I, maybe it's a full grain. Uh, it's full grain, the the harvest, and those kind of didn't wear in that great. They they get really dusty, and I haven't like washed them. Um, I got a pair. I have a lot of boots, <laughs> and I will inevitably forget some. I have a pair of um, quaddy boots in black chrome XL with the uh, they have the leather uh, like a softer leather outsole. The bottom is a, a leather called Chrome Pack, which is kind of like Chrome XL. Um, it's not like that. It's not like a leather sole like most people would imagine. It's like a soft, like old school moccasin kind of thing where like when you step and you step on a rock or something, you like really feel it through. They're cool because they're all blacked out. I, I like that sort of stealthy look where it's all black everything and the laces are black. Um, there's been customers at Horween that have come in that I've met with and they like inspired me and I, I buy products from them. Um, and some of them don't exist anymore. Like I have a pair of boots from a company called Boston Boot Company. And and they kind of did the opposite of what I'm talking about, where they like added things for aesthetic that like didn't add to the function that to make them stand out a little bit differently. Like they had all black eyelets, but one was like a red eyelet just to like sort of set them apart. I was like, okay, that's interesting. I, I don't know if I love it. But they kind of sold me on like, we're selling a plain toe Chrome XL, uh, sort of like a chucka. It's like a low, low shaft uh, boot. And it was like a hundred bucks. And this was before Thursday boot. So they kind of like got me with that. I was like, man, like, let's see what these guys are up to. So I bought a pair from them and try to support them. Um, I have a lot of shoes too. And um if you bear with me, right behind me, there's a couple pair. There's one pair that's like really special. Yeah, absolutely. Have you heard of Oak Street Bootmaker? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've followed them for quite a while. So oh. this is um this is a pair of their their boat shoes. Um, but right. this is like when they first started. I picked up a pair of these to support him, and like look how um look how my my foot has like pooched out the side of it. 
But this is what I was talking about with Chrome Excel, where um, maybe there might be something to sizing down that makes it better. Mm -hmm. These are infinite. Like, actually, I finally broken them a little bit. Um, but I've worn these so much in all scenarios, and they're perfect. They're so. This is the by far the most comfortable pair of anything that I've ever worn. Interesting. I don't, I don't know why. I, I I have two suspicions. Um, number one, the Chrome XL I find to be terribly comfortable. The other thing is these are unlined Chrome XL. So they're, I think there's something to that. When I interviewed Wyatt from Grant Stone, like almost exactly a year ago, I took him out to dinner afterwards and I was like, you know what? I noticed on these shoes here, they're unlined. Like, why don't you do some online stuff? he said that it's really really hard to do uh, an online shoe yeah um but man they're comfortable i saw viberg did a pair of online natural shell boots for like a tattoo artist i think they blogged about it and i was like man those look great i kind of wish i could have had those instead of my lined vibergs so i have um and i didn't know this until i talked to david um <laughs> I have a pair of, of natural shell plain toe boots from Viberg yeah. on the 210 last, which he, he's like, oh my God, those are 210. I was like, well, yeah, what does that mean? I, I don't, I don't, I guess I don't get nerdy on last enough, yeah. but he's like, yeah, they don't like, you can't get a 210, but like, I guess I have yeah. that. It's, I like it, <laughs> but, yeah. um, so I have those, um, I have the Grant stone diesel boots. I have a pair of long wing, uh, long wing tip, uh, natural Chrome Excel shoes from Grant Stone. Also, I bought a pair of old floor shimes off of eBay in shell that I don't really wear that much. Um, what other boots do I have? I've had a lot of stuff and I sure I forgot most of it, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I, I want to do. I want to do like a series on my YouTube channel in the mm -hmm. same kind of in the same way that we're doing now. Um, but I yeah. want to invite uh, there's a sales guy named Brett Klein from Viberg. He was on that shoe cast. So yeah. you might've caught him on there. On shoe cast. Yes. Uh, Brett and I have become a little friendly and I was kind of thinking it'd be like mutually beneficial to have me show people like what the shopping process would be like for buying a pair of uh, Aldens. And I also want to get like, Hey, Brett, tell me like all your customers that are doing cool stuff. And like, like sort of do a live chat, like going through all the different websites for each of these companies and like showing like how Alden can make up differently for different places and then like buy a pair and try them out and like review them and stuff. Um, so I do need, I would like to get myself some more, something mm -hmm. um i like alden a lot i think of where i wash out on everything is like number one it's got to fit right i find alden to be pretty forgiving on fit mm -hmm. uh i've had good luck with the berry last and the true balance last that berry last on the roy boot is mega comfortable oh, at yeah. least for me uh on the chrome excel the crepe soles like yeah Context clothing kind of nailed it with that makeup a bunch of years ago. And that's like the era from when I, when I got it. Okay. Nice. Um, actually the, the Chrome Excel indie boots are quite comfortable too. And those are also the Barry la or a true balance last. Mm -hmm. They're, they're not the Barry last, but those are also sized down di lower than what I normally would choose. Like, okay. So I, so I don't know, like, they were, they were a little tight on me at first, but man, those those Chrome Excel indie boots are super comfortable. It's yeah. so hard for me to know, um, but I really feel strongly about the sizing thing, and I think that's something that you've echoed in some of your content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure, for sure, definitely. Because most of my life, I wore the wrong size. I was sizing too small in most everything, and, and you know, sitting at my desk or being at work, I was wanting to kick them off, and I would kick my shoes off, you know, because it's just, it's just miserable, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. blood, if it can't circulate back up into your body, then you're not living a very healthy 
life. You know, blood has to be able to circulate freely through your entire body. So if, if you are something that's too constricting at any point, it sort of, it creates a dam, you know, if you want to think of it like that, and that's not comfortable. So when I first stepped into the Alden True Balance last, it was like, I wanted to cry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, Is that your, that Norwegian split toe was your first one? This was, I think my third pair of Aldens. Actually, my first pair of Aldens, I actually don't have anymore, but this was, these were my second. These were the Alden yep. four or fives. And uh, yeah, yes, because um, my first pair of Aldens I sized incorrectly. They were the Alden 403 Indie Boot. I bought them in a size nine. They were a good fit for about three months, and then they were just way too big. I needed. What's your What's your Brannock? Um, I'm a nine Brannock. So oh, it was a little big. Yeah, it was big. It was way too big. So after they broke in, they were like way too floppy. So I ended up getting some 403s in a size eight and a half and they they continue to serve me well so yeah yeah okay so that okay you're kind of i had the similar experience we're like okay these are perhaps a little small but like they really really wear in well on the chrome excel 100 percent, yes 100 percent. yeah because at first when i got them they were fine they fit great you know um but then after they broke in they were just too floppy so i put an put a synthetic insole in there and yeah, I don't, like those. I don't like those at all. So yeah, I just ended up, I ended up, you know, counting my losses and selling them off on eBay. But, uh, but yeah, so the eight and a half really works well, but even then, like, even then, oh, there's a commando on those. Yeah. Yeah. So these actually aren't technically the four threes. These are from a shop called Epaulette in New York city. This, this is yep. Innsbruck indie boot with gold eyelets and, uh, yeah, Commando Alden Commando Soul. That's slick. What what's I, I also I like the neoprene cork. I mean, what do you I guess we could talk about Wyatt who says like leather soul is like the best by far. What are you kinda what are you into? I've been into day night. I know people are kind of hit or miss on that, mm -hmm. but yeah, I love day night. I'm like neutral on day night. Like it's like the most neutral soul for me. To be honest, this is my favorite soul, the Neo Cork. Yeah. Um, now, it's kind of soft enough, but also like durable. Yes. So I find it just so supportive. Um, but yeah, like why it really opened my mind to the leather sole. That's why I just got my Roar boots resold to a leather sole is because um, like why it talks about his grandpa, which I heard in your interview, his grandpa was always like asking why, like, why would you put rubber on that boot? Put leather on it, put right. leather on that thing. And that really opened my eyes. Like it, from his perspective, leather was the classiest, the best, the the highest tier thing sole you could have on a boot. And um, so I started giving it a chance. So I actually started having my cobbler um, put toe taps on my leather soles. And so now I'm wearing my leather soles. And you know what? They hold up very, very well, surprisingly well, like more than better than I ever thought they would. Anyway, so like, what about traction on them? Oh, traction, you know, and this is something I mentioned recently was, yeah, the traction is not there, but I find that because I'm a snowboarder in the wintertime. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my, my mind is always on balance anyways. So like, hmm. yeah, if you have poor balance, you'll slip in anything. The only time I've ever slipped in a leather sole is when I'm not paying attention to my balance. So like, yeah, yeah I've down my steps before in a leather sole. But, um, but honestly, like, even in ice, if I'm just being mindful of my balance and if I'm well, ground, yeah, true. You know what though? The, those, uh, those thousand mile boots that I love so much. Yeah. They're the slickest soles in yeah. history. They're right. so slick. <laughs> I mean, I hear what you're saying too. Cause like I'll wear them in the winter, but like, yeah, you gotta like really pay attention. Yes. Uh, even like even a lug sole, you're going to slide on ice. Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I slip and slide in day night. Uh, yeah, I, I can ice skate in day night soles. So uh, long story short, I don't I don't put all the reliance on my soles. I put the reliance on my own balance first and foremost. Now that's not to say there's not going to be a one off chance where yes, I slip and fall in my leather sole shoes. But you know, because I'm also into biking. You saw my bikes. Um, yeah, so I, I'm used to walking into a bike shop and a bike salesman trying to sell me like a five hundred dollar bike seat because it's three grams lighter and mm. higher density foam than the seat that I'm using, you know, cause to a professional, that's something that's important to me. I don't care, but you know, I'm just a, I'm just a plebeian when it comes to bike riding in my mind, the high density foam, really expensive 
bike saddle is the same, almost equivalent in a lot of ways to a leather sole. Like it's high density. It's the most natural if you think about it, because it's skin, you know, it's not synthetic material like a rubber. So, so if you're standing on it long, like long-term, like all day, like I just had these Roy boots resold in JR soles and I've been standing on them for the past four or five hours. And you know, I'm still comfortable because <laughs> it's just such a high density material that leather to stand on is the more leather between your foot and the ground, I think is better for your, for your posture and just for overall support. So Interesting. Yeah, I noticed that I can't stand on rubber for as nearly as long as I can on leather. So is that a, I wonder if that analogy holds true. Um, my my family and I grew up bike riding uh, and I still enjoy cycling a lot. Yeah. And I always recall that. Um, so, for example, we, we used to do this bike ride across the state of Iowa uh, mm -hmm. every summer, which was really fun. And we would. Um, when I was a kid, we would get neighbors to do it with us and they were like, not really cyclists. And they would, you know, we'd train together. And one of the guys, one of the dads, like older guys would show up and say, Hey, look at the saddle I picked up. It's really soft and squishy. Mm -hmm. And we'd be like, yeah, you know, like that's going to suck mm -hmm. <laughs> for a while. Like you want firm as hell. You think that analogy sort of translates properly or the same way onto souls? I, I do. I think it's it's a direct translation um, because yeah I'm with you like I bought some really cheap squishy bike seats from I think Dick Sporting Goods for like twenty dollars and they like you said they suck they're terrible they're good for like a mile it's like oh this is comfortable for like a mile but yeah try try biking fifty miles in that thing tell me how you feel it's not gonna feel good so same thing I think for for footwear I, I equate the leather sole especially a thick leather sole to a high density foam bike seat. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, like I noticed like on my day night soles, this is a Grant Stone micro stud sole. And right. I've been wearing these, I wore these two, three times since I got them so far and they're great, you know, but honestly I can't stand on, on them as long as interesting. Say, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I could, I could, I definitely find that something like this with the thicker leather sole is is much easier and here's the other thing it wicks moisture better breathes better so like your foot sweats out i don't know how many cups of sweat per day which is kind of gross now think about the leather the leather is not letting it's not that. going anywhere yeah it's, it's staying in there the leather sole yeah sorry the rubber doesn't let this okay so they're, they're cool a little bit cooler on your foot too yeah yeah, the, the leather, you know, due to the fibrous nature of it will allow moisture to wick out. So that's interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah, yeah. Th that's just something I noticed. So like it breathes better because it lets moisture out. It's wicking, it's moisture wicking kind of like, you know, cer certain athletic clothing. It's, it's designed to be moisture wicking. It's not cotton, cotton, which retains moisture, holds it. So like if you're jogging and you're wearing all cotton, the cotton clothing like holds on to your sweat right it, you know whereas whereas the newer like athletic clothing it actually wicks the moisture out it evaporates as you go and that's what i think the leather soles doing oh, man i didn't think about that that makes a lot of sense yeah yeah so that, that's kind of why i've come to prefer the leather sole actually the crepe sole it, yeah and what are your experiences with the crepe sole um yeah that's it's funny you ask that because i actually came to the conclusion i don't I don't love it. It's good at first. It's comfy at first, but um, actually it's funny. My cobbler, I brought him in to him and he literally ripped this thing right off. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> like I brought him into him. They're, they're seven year old Roy boots. He just like peeled it off with his hand. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no. Here it is. I got it on, on Instagram. Sorry. This is, this is uh, terrible. <laughs> oh yeah. man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he just rips it right off and slaps. Oh, well, that's a shame. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but no, don't don't get me wrong. Like it was it was a great soul. Wow. I mean, mine have held up, and I'm. I mean, I'm not trying to say I'm right and you're wrong. It, I, I've yeah. had a good experience with mine, but that's interesting. Why do you think it's separating that easily? Um, it was just you wore it a lot. Yeah, I wore it a lot, and throughout the life of the soul, I had to. I had to constantly reapply glue to to hold it together because the, the flaps of it were actually coming separated okay yeah that's I interesting i haven't seen that yet maybe yeah. we just haven't worn them enough okay. yeah on, on on that particular pair i have some here as well 
Um, this is this is hold up held up better. Let me see if it, yeah, that's separating a little bit. Yeah, let me see here. That's where it starts to go first is on the sides. Yeah, on the sides there. On the I better on, check mine out. Yeah, on the Roy boot, it was it was a lot worse. So the good thing I'll say about it is like these could actually walk on ice without slipping in most cases. But that said, I did not find the squishiness to be very supportive long term. No, that's but, certainly not. <laughs> yeah, you move you move a little bit. Right, kind of exactly. Float. Yeah, exactly. the other thing that's interesting about the uh, the Roy boot, uh, my buddy Nick, uh, Nick Horween, was wearing a pair of those. I forget where he went, but he went off to some, it might have been a hide supplier, and he stepped on like oil or something, and he said it like melted his soles. So I don't think they're very resilient to like certain things. Yeah, that, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. And kind of like how you brought up the squishy bike seat earlier too. That's kind of what I equate the the crepe soles to the squishy bike seat because it's like, yeah, it's great when you first put them on and when you take a quick walk in them. It yeah, it feels like a dream come true, right? Like it's it's fluffy, like a like a right. I, I mean, I, honestly, I kind of like like I wore them around today and I was like, these are pretty comfortable. Like yeah. I had forgotten because I've been wearing these like hiking shoes that are like waterproof and lug sole type of things for snow and ice and stuff. Uh, Okay. And I put those Roy boots on. I was like, oh, yeah, these are nice. Right. <laughs> so maybe it's just that that perspective shift. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. You're the um, – I know a little bit about leather. It seems like you know so much more about shoes. But something that's been a hang-up for me, I really like speed laces. Like, sure, they still take a while. I've ripped the crap out of my laces. Do you have, like, preferred laces that you're into? Do you oh. like a flat wax stuff or – um yeah have you ripped any laces before I, I feel like i ripped them maybe i'm tying it too hard or something and actually i wanted to give a shout out to grant stonian because i was noticing when i was lacing up my the uh, roy boots today they had the five speed speed hooks where the grandstone has the three and they're spaced farther it's like so much more pleasant to lace up yes so that was thought out properly Right. Yeah. Grant Stone really does a good job with their speed hook laces. And I, I'm actually in the minority. I prefer speed hooks. Most guys don't. Most guys. Like, I like them. Yeah, me too. I love, I love speed hooks. I hate lacing through each. It item. takes forever. It, it takes it, long uh, with the speed hooks. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It, yeah. It's, <laughs> my father-in-law wears Velcro shoes <laughs> and he watches me tie my, my like speed hook shoes. He's like, how do you do that every time? I'm like, you know, you just, you just do it, man. <laughs> He's like, I just Velcro them. Like, yeah, that's, it's cause you like Velcro shoes. <laughs> Velcro them shut. He'll never see this. Sorry, Steve, if you do. Right. <laughs> He's not trying to buy leather shoes. <laughs> oh he's watching <laughs> he's watching and stewing right now <laughs> but yeah i mean it's it's it takes forever it, even with like without the speed hooks i don't know i don't think i would do it to be honest right right I, i'm with you um yeah i mean it, as as far as as far as laces go my favorite is the rawhide lace from guarded goods i don't mm. know if you're familiar with that shop um i am okay yeah jesse at guarded goods he sells one of the best rawhide laces on the market and it's a 72 inch lace. You can cut it to size, but I like to leave it long enough so that I can wrap it around. You go around the shaft. Yeah. Yeah. In, in most cases. Yes. Yes. Are those, how do those differ from the stock uh, grandstone ones? I like the grandstone ones. I feel like they're going to rip soon though. Right. Right. The grandstone ones are a little different in a few ways. That, that's, a, that's a really good question because I've never actually articulated that. Um, but yeah, the Grantstone ones, they're actually, they are made in Kentucky. So they are also American made, but um, they, they seem almost like there's more mm, good. That's a good question. They, they seem almost in a lot of ways. They're spongy a little bit, right? Exactly. Yes. <clears throat> word. Whereas the guarded goods ones, they, they sort of have more texture. And so when I lace them, they hold together better. I feel like the Grant Stone ones almost have a little bit more slip, so they come undone more frequently. Okay. Thank you for saying that because I thought I was tying my shoe. Okay, two things. I thought I was tying my shoes wrong, which it turns out I kind of was. Like, 
I don't know how to describe it, but uh, turns out if you do the two bunny ears and just like turn the bunny ears together, like that holds. Mm -hmm. um, so I started doing that, but like yeah. I don't, I was doing like around the. Oh, the camera went away. Oh, I started to do. Uh, I started to do the like around the tree tying like originally and those no matter what those always come undone on the leather laces um but maybe it's because of the the laces themselves okay yes yes and and this is a realization i just recently had with raw hides is when you're lacing them because i used to double tie them to keep them from coming undone right i've found that if you just create a tension point so i do a single normal tie but all you all you do is let me see if I can demonstrate it here. Uh, all, all you really do is you just create a tension point. And uh, so essentially when you tie it, what I do is I just, I pull it real tight once it's tied. I yeah. Just put a lot of pressure and that creates a cinch. It cinches the leather tight enough to where it will never come untied until you pull them open. Right. If that makes sense. So that's what I do now. I do, I do a, I do a single, just a standard knot and I, I cinch it tight right there. And that way it holds the leather actually has a, has a tensillary strength. It holds itself in place, if that makes sense. So that, that's what I, yeah, yeah. That, that's what I found works best for me anyways. Now on the grant stone laces, like, yeah, I, I feel like they still slip out. Yeah. They're you, kind of long. Maybe, I, maybe I need to cut mine down too. Yeah, and they are a little long too. But don't get me wrong; they're great laces. But um, I just I love the ones from Guarded Goods. Like I'm just very partial to them. Yeah, David uh, Vintage Future sent me um, some flat wax from from there. Actually, I put those on my thousand mile boots. Yeah, and they look really nice. So yeah, I probably I need to hit up Jesse. Uh, that's Guarded Goods guy, right? That's yeah. Jesse. Yeah. They hit him up and get some leather laces. Yes, for sure. He's he's really good. And then also for Jesse Alt at Guarded Goods, he also sells these round um, cotton laces. Which I so Alden sells. I actually kind of like those like very fine like round laces that Alden sells like for their dress stuff. But they yeah. break, man. And yes, I don't know. I found those to be very nice until they broke. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, maybe that's just a thing about fine like a smaller lace. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Or I'm doing it wrong. Like sometimes I'll hit the the speed hook at like I'll like thread the speed hook through the lace on like a flat waxed. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm a baby with laces. <laughs> it turns out I just like can't figure out laces. That's okay. That's okay. I think a lot of us are the same way. Like like I just I've been doing raw hides for many years, and I just this year discovered the thing about cinching it shut so yeah that makes sense yeah yeah don't don't feel bad but yeah i've got i've got the round the I round kind of like the, they look pretty sleek yeah they look good in the thin eyelets with the aldens and I, I think it's because of the thin eyelets i'll emphasize like i think yeah size has something to do with how the lace looks yeah those diesel boots have the really chunk eyelets yeah. right diesel boots have the chunky eyelets so i like the rawhide in there same with crewmen same with i gotta ask you something i gotta interrupt you what's up with the kilties i are you i i don't know i don't know man like it's not for me like it's kind of like everything i talk about it's like yeah if you like it it's great but like why does it have a purpose to is it like covering it so you don't get dirt in your foot um that's a good question so actually my my friend um yeah my friend at um uh, what's what's his IG handle? It's Nerdin with Boots. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I believe his name is also Jesse at Nerdin with Boots. He's just getting started with his company called Trinity Handmade, where they make yeah they, they make kilties. Right. He I think I saw a post from you on that, right? Yes, exactly, exactly. And he sent me some. He sent me these natural Chrome Excel kilties, as well as some brown Chrome Excel here and he said hey man even if you don't end up using them i just want to get your feedback so he it's just prototype st stuff and uh so he sent them to me to nice see. yeah yeah i thought it was i thought it was really cool and he sent them to me to give them a try and i found that honestly like there is a benefit and it's okay not, 
aesthetic. Yeah. Like, so do you ever see pictures on Instagram of like guys, they lace up their indie boots and it, the eyelets are like super close to each other. Like it's almost like the, the indie boots like this. Yeah. It's for that. It's just separated out a little bit. Um, yeah. That's one of the benefits that I found is it puts some volume in there. So if you have like a low instep, or if you have like like a low volume foot, it'll eat up some of that volume. It'll create a better separation here and put oh. some leather there. It, it'll create some more comfort for you. So, and I found that especially in my Chrome XL, which is stretched out a lot. So when I lace up my Chrome XL, yeah, the, the eyelets do come pretty close. That puts a little bit more separation there and it makes it a little, just a little bit more comfortable for me. Personally. Okay. So it's not, it's not like a, is is there like a a reason that they started doing that other than like hey this looks cool? <clears throat> Question. I don't I don't actually know the history. I don't know. I I think I maybe, thought I heard somewhere it was like a dirt thing. Like hey, it's going to keep some stuff out, but I don't know. I could see that. I could see it cuz cuz yeah, the kilty itself actually is pretty wide. It it actually covers the entire tongue. So it could that could be the case. Yes. Like if you're walking around and dust all day or something it would like keep your foot dust free or something <laughs> right right I, I could see that being the case yeah and it is kind of strange because you've got the original tongue and then the kilty overlap so there's like a lot of material here so it, yeah. is, it is kind of awkward in a sense but at the same time i i do enjoy the extra leather and yeah you know and i'm, I'm the type i like i like heavy things like i know some people they don't like heavy things. I like heavy things. I like heavy boots. I like heavy watches. That's just right. that's like carrying around heavy, substantial gear. So, so yeah, gotcha. yeah that, that's just my preference. And uh, yeah, so I feel like the more heavy leather I have on me, the bit, almost it's better. We should get that Kilty guy to do um, just like wacky stuff, like yeah. uh, kind of like the Ashland private stock, like just make a bright ass orange one or, you know, like just because it'd be fun way to like sort of change up your existing in the same way that like uh like i said david sent me some laces he sent me some green like like um sort of like army green fatigue t sort of green uh laces like the brownish green yeah. and i put those on the brown chrome excel and it like totally changed the boots like this guy should do that with the kilties like you might be able to do some wacky combos or whatever you oh, know yes a hundred percent that'd be kind of fun yeah, I think it would be fun. He's a really nice guy. He was, a, his story was he was a tattoo artist. And because of this pandemic lockdown crap, he decided to start like a side hobby slash side business. So he's, still, to my knowledge, he's still in the process of getting his website up and stuff. But he's just sort of prototyping things at, at the moment. And uh, so yeah, I was very honored when he asked me to you know, try out some of his stuff. So, um, and I'm, I'm like you, like I never liked the kilties until I tried them and I was like, Oh, this is, it's not for all my boots, but for some of them, I think it works. So I've never, honestly, I've never tried it. Yeah. So I should yeah. probably give them a shot. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're cool. And you know, he just, he just released a new thing called the blind kilty to where you don't even realize that you have one. <laughs> so hmm. It's, it's kind of like this, except it's, it's like way further up. Yeah. If that oh, interesting. Sense. Yeah. So it kind of just looks like part of the, the tongue or the gusset or whatever. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> exactly. It looks like it's already part of the boot. So whereas on this one, obviously it protrudes out. Okay. But, yeah. I mean, I kind of like that vibe more than the fringe fringe one. Yeah. It's like kind of Scottish or something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> it, looks, it looks like a, what are those things called? The kilt. The kilt. Yeah. And then where? <laughs> Yeah. yeah right i was never a fan of that personally but i think it i think it kind of works on this pair but uh, yeah yeah i thought they used to like slit them up higher yeah uh, which seems to defeat the purpose if like they were supposed to keep out dust or whatever right i just i guess i i'm so guilty uh unknowledgeable <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, I'm with you. I see those slit ones and so, sometimes if there's a pattern on them, I think they just look atrocious. So they, ha in my opinion, they have to be simple. Otherwise it's for me, it's a no go anyways. Cause yeah, I feel like, like, especially the, this, these ones with the teeth, they used to kind of put me off a little bit. Right. So, 
but but yeah it's it's all about it's all about balancing that aesthetic you know i don't have to tell you that because you you know very well you know when it comes to wallet design and all that so well yeah i guess that was kind of my personal preference is just like nothing like give me nothing (laughs) like i just want a clean clean simple thing right right and actually i so full disclosure before i started this interview i asked some of my friends if they had questions for you okay great yeah yeah, my one my one friend Adam Grimm, his question is, I can't think of any questions for Phil. That Derby is the best wallet ever made. So that's his question. <laughs> I <laughs> am quite biased, but um, I know you don't have a Herbie. True, but I, you yes. know, it, it, uh, do you, you? I know you're minimalist uh, style. Do you carry your wallet in your front pocket or your back pocket? Um, both. Yeah. Oh. Yes, it, it it rotates. Yeah, it goes- I'm like a exclusive back pocket guy, and I mean it's like not a better or worse thing, right? But um, what was your friend's name? Oh, Adam Grant. Ad- Adam. Yeah, I mean Adam's kind of right uh, in my opinion because I don't have a Herbie. Actually, maybe I do have a Herbie here somewhere. Yeah, but uh, that wallet, the way it's laid out, is is unique in a sense. I guess we've been copied a bit like since I made that on my couch 11 years ago or whatever. But um, the way that the cards are not stacked on top of each other, like if you imagine a bifold wallet, there's typically like three stacks of cards on each side that sort of like sandwich and close together a a bifold. Um, on the Herbie, those cards are not laying on top of each other. So because they're laid out like a, like this, um, how do I describe this without showing a Herbie? Yeah. <laughs> they're not stacked on top of each other like this. They're sort of okay. separated out. So it's roughly the size of a passport. And because the cards are not laying on top of each other, yeah. for me, it lays flatter in the back pocket and it's just more comfortable. And there were like a couple other unintended side effects of that is um, it's thinner, but it's like visually larger. So people are turned off because it's like doesn't look like what they think a wall it should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but it just tends to be flatter and more comfortable in your back pocket. It's, it's different than sitting on like even this Capone, which I really like. Um, it's still like a little thin, but uh, well, the camera won't focus. But because all the cars are stacked in one sort of space, there's no surface area to spread them across. So this is kind of like it's not that thick, but some yeah. wallets can kind of be like sitting on a softball. It's like way too thick, and that's not the best experience. So spreading out that content over more surface area, Fat Herbie like makes it more comfortable. But the unintended consequence that I didn't think about is it holds all paper currency. So it can hold dollars and euros and yen and everything. It will hold every paper currency in the world. And there's something about this large slot in the back with a thumb notch. It's like, sure, a money clip's like easy to drop money into the, the center here. But like the Herbie is just so pleasant and easy to use it's kind of like your tony but like even the tony is like a a little like pulled in and tighter like where it's sometimes if you put a ton of cards on the inside it still can be a little hard to put some cash in the back right. but the herbie is just like so easy with with that little thumb notch that you have there mm-hmm. the herbie is a little bit bigger it's i don't know it's really easy to use cash i hate using cash <laughs> but when i have to like I'm usually glad that I have a Herbie. The other unintended thing about the Herbie that's cool is you can slide a passport in the back of it if you have to, uh, like in a pinch. I mean, we make passport holders, but, you know, sometimes you don't want to bring like a whole separate thing. You just, I've done it where I just like drop a a passport holder into that, um, the paper money slot, the bill slot in the back. Okay. I don't know. I, I like fat Herbie. It's, it's yeah. our it's one of our best sellers. Um, people buy a lot of fat herpes, which yeah. I love. It's not like if if um th- sometimes I have to think about my business from like a layperson's perspective. So it'd be like if my mom wanted to buy my dad a wallet and she searched leather wallet and the herbie came up, she'd be like, What is it? Like that's weird. 
it's different. Right. Um, so it's not, it's like a little bit more of like an enthusiast sort of thing. The other often awesome thing about it is like, it's huge. So you get like this huge piece of leather and you, like in something like the reverse of the marble that we're talking about, you get this like huge context, which is sort of analogous to like a hole cut shoe or something like that, uh, yeah. where you just get this like, man, that's like a big chunk. Um, so I don't know, like I love the Herbie. The Johnny the Fox is our bestseller because I think people envision a wallet to look like that. Um, but it's it's kind of um, like we sell a lot of wallets and it's kind of hard to innovate a wallet. <laughs> uh, it turns out it's it yeah. seems like most people have their mind made up of like what it's supposed to be and they are not really interested in like messing around with that. I mean, I'm looking behind you, like mm-hmm. I don't have the finest um, fidelity of this image, but like from this perspective, they all basically look like the same silhouette. And I know that's not true. I think that's how people look at wallets. They go like, oh, they're all the same. Right. So like one that's like so strange and like huge, you'd be like, that's not a wallet. That's like something weird. So it's, that's kind of a challenge that we run into. Um, But luckily we run into people like yourself that like are patient enough and um, thoughtful enough to like, realize and recognize that there's a difference in things that they'll take the time to like think about it and try it out um so we're we're lucky in that regard uh, yeah. but yeah. that herbie's the best yeah. <laughs> yes absolutely thank i you. agree thank you adam for your question which was a statement <laughs> no, he's totally right yeah he, he is 100 percent right <laughs> yeah so two things one you sold me on a fat herbie now i just have to figure out what leather i wanted in <laughs> <laughs> oh that's a, actually that's an interesting like i know knowing you like yeah you said you like you like marbled stuff yes like, knowing you the herbie really really lends itself well to like big pieces of things that are kind of variable like you know like this um money clip that we call it the capone uh this one's made in english tan dublin which Ooh. does have some like natural character and randomization to it so even something like this is nice. I find something like, like people buy a lot of Chrome Excel wallets for me. I find that that to be a little bit less interesting. Like it's a, it's a little bit too clean, um, but there is something also about like a clean big piece. But I really think the Herbie shines with like big randomization, reverse shell or marbled. It's like, and you open it up on the back of it. You're like, damn, that's like, Sometimes I I wish like I didn't cut some of the marble shells and just like frame them because without the full context of that whole oval shape, it kind of loses a little bit of magic. Uh, okay. And I don't know if I've ever shown you some of those full pieces of shells, but like a big piece of marble shell with all the variation, you see all of it. It's it's different. It's a little bit more magical. Same on those like psychedelic shells where it's like oh my god this. I don't know how to describe it, but uh, there's something about it, uh, more context in, in those types of things that are better. I, I suppose it'd be like a Jackson Pollock painting where like if you just cut like a little square of it, it's less special. But like if you have this huge splatter painting, it's like, man, that's cool. You know, it's it's kind of it's kind of like that. Get get more of a sample, get more of a view of, of what's going on. It's more on unfair- right play exactly exactly like i love i love this wallet but i have to look kind of close to see like all the potential things that could be happening with it you know what i mean i can barely see there's a little bit of orange in the bottom left yes yes there is yeah i wish i had a better camera but yeah it's 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 a phenomenal especially in full sunlight i really get a good picture but i feel like if i had this in a fat herbie it would just be another dimension altogether so right i'll i'll, I'll definitely be getting one of those a fat herbie for sure sir cuz i mean yeah, hit me up yeah absolutely absolutely yeah but um the other thing that you're tapping tapping into is as far as like you're talking about reinventing the wheel like i'm also into this side hobby of edc i don't know if you follow the everyday carry type Yes, that's right. our scene. That's what people uh, people that come to us are into knives and guns and all yeah. that stuff. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so like, for <clears> example, <throat> oh, and so this is funny. So I follow UrbanEDCSupply.com, 
and they just posted a knife and I forget who makes it, but it's a real small batch knife maker. And I went and I followed his Instagram page and I saw you were one of the people that liked his, his picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was just this morning. It was the craziest thing. I'm like, Phil at Ash and Leather likes this. I'm like, what? Oh, I mean, that's our, that's our scene, man. Uh, yeah. Like pens are really big with our customers. Um, like right. little, like, um, I don't know if I have one here anymore. I think I brought it to work. Like little desk, uh, like I have a uh, top, like a, something you just spin on your desk. Like those types of things people are really into um, from us. It's like fidget spinners people are really into for a while. Um, mm -hmm. But I think um, it's interesting, like Nick and myself, Nick Horween, is also really into like the same stuff. It's yeah. something about like our personality type that like wants to see like like it's on a watch. Like you look at the backside, and you can like see how it, the movement's working. Yeah, I think there's, and it's the same with like a gun, where it's like he's fascinated with like, okay, here's how this gun works. Like that's really interesting. There's like a, uh, it must be a certain personality type that loves like understanding these little details of things, and then just like obsesses about it. Um, so it's interesting that Nick and I sort of found that crew of people it's the same with knives like nick is nick is so into knives i uh, i just like can't afford as much stuff as he can <laughs> but uh man he's got a lot skip and skip horween collects pens like crazy so it's it's kind of like they accidentally like are working in their their scene and that's how i feel with the wallets is like i love the leather and like i just wanted to make stuff out of stuff i love to see how it aged and it turns out there's thousands of people that are also like that. Yes. Um, so yeah. it, could you imagine if the tannery is run by somebody that didn't like EDC type of stuff or, or leather? Like yeah. I, I would guarantee that many businesses are run by people that don't care about what they're making. And that's like a really, really sad. I couldn't imagine going to work and not being like, I wake up every day before the, I had a child. <laughs> I woke up every day uh, excited about like going to look at leather and like excited about trying something new. I could you, I couldn't imagine a life where I dread going to work every day. Like that must be so depressing and I feel terrible for those people. But I imagine there's many people like that that get up every day just dreading what's in store for them. And that's really sad. Yeah, that, that's so true. And that's what I really admire about you is you follow your intuition, you follow, you truly follow your passion, which is, you know, just what I love because yeah, like, like I, I sort of created my YouTube channel out of that same idea. Like this is my escape. This is my outlet because I'm so fascinated by boots, leather, EDC gear, you know, the knives you touched on the top. Um, I, yeah. just, I just did a, um, a video it got like no views, but it was a, uh, <laughs> it was a mech force everyday carry gyroscope. Oh, and cool. It, yeah. It's like a fidget spinner, but it's supposed to teach you. It's got like three rings that spin inter interchangeably and it, it's like calibrated. They're fun to just like spin around your hand. Like, is that one that goes like this? Yeah. Yeah. It does. I, I don't know. It's kind of fun. <laughs> it's like a little bit satisfying. I don't know. It's satisfying. It's fascinating. And I, I don't know what draws me to it. But another thing that I did was I, I've collected a lot of Douglas Field lighters, like World War II trench lighters. Cool. I'm not familiar with that, but that's what's oh. that like? Yeah, yeah. They're they're made out of brass. They're made in Japan and they're they're over engineered, so they're designed to be like <laughs> Of course. Yeah. <laughs> They're like super duper, like just the most beautiful lighters you've ever seen in your life. And they're surprisingly not very expensive. Um, but, and I have a picture here. I, I can pull it up, but, um, but yeah. It's different, different from a Zippo. Uh, oh yeah. Like quite different. Okay. Yeah. Much, much like, like night and day different, but I did a video on it, not expecting to get many views. And sure enough, I released it and it, initially didn't get very many views but then i checked back just recently and it's one of my most viewed videos now <laughs> <laughs> here they are Here's oh my... wow yeah are those beautiful wow okay and that's that those are kind of old 
Yeah, yeah, uh, no, they're actually not old. Um, they're, they're, um, here, here's a closer up better. Are they like butane torches? Yeah. 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 They're, usually they're torches. Yeah. They're about, they're, they're, they're pretty small. But... I mean, it looks kind of badass. It yeah. reminds me of something though. Yeah. They're, they're incredible. They're incredible. Are you, are you into flashlights at all? Yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. It's the same scene, right? So there's a guy named Mushant and uh enrique mushant is uh he buys a bunch of stuff from us and we make like leather sheets okay. check out um m-u-y-s-h-o-n-d-t um okay dude <laughs> he, <laughs> i met him at horween and um he's he's like a brilliant engineer dude okay. and he came in he's like i need some like leather sheets and i made i ended up making him stuff He's like, I was like, how did you get into this? He's like, yeah, this is a side hobby. Like, I'm a crazy physicist or something. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I just wanted to make a lightsaber. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's cool. Let's check it out. And he he gave me a couple. They're they talk about over engineered. They're really really cool. And he yeah. makes some crazy um, the crazy metal ones. Uh, I don't I don't even know the name the Mogomu steel or whatever. Um, yeah. He just like makes some crazy materials and they're so expensive. It's like yes. twelve hundred dollar flashlights. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but he doesn't care. It's fun. It's like that's what I love is like the yeah. the times that we live in. It like doesn't matter. You can kind of do something small on the side. Um, so true, and, and people are into it. So true. Yeah, I'm looking at them. I see the mouse. Or, I have or, I have one of each of them. The the Flieger. And the beagle is actually pretty sweet. Okay, uh, I have I have all of them, but that Mo Mokotu, uh, Mokoti, Mokoti, three thousand dollar beagle. I'm looking at it right now. Mokoti <laughs> beagle opus three grand. What is going on here? <laughs> I mean, it's like, but it's awesome, right? Like, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd buy that, but like somebody's buying that. He gave me a uh, a titanium flieger, wow. which is pretty sweet. It like looks like a lightsaber yes it does i'm looking at it now it's cool right i mean yeah. so yeah and you can see the sheets we made him i like the beagle yeah. uh and flieger like belt belt holsters that we did for him they turned out pretty well yeah i see the mouse leather sheets sheets so okay so i see it Mo moishant how do you how do you pronounce it uh mushant 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 and ashland whoa that's yeah he's cool man and the other interesting thing, this is a, a weird one, is yeah. if you go down to more goods, he has artwork. He has some really cool posters for his flashlights. <laughs> I mean, look at the like uh, the Flieger one. They're all so cool. Like he has a really cool artist working with him. I mean, I'm he get, he sent me one of these posters uh, a bunch of years ago. So he's a cool guy, man. He, I don't know if you're in flashlights, like it's pretty expensive, but uh, it's at yeah. least fun to look at, you know? Right. All right. Well, I just, I just realized that you and me, we have like 12 more hours worth of talking to do <laughs> Another point because like, yeah, first off, like fr from urban EDC supply.com, I just got a pretty nice copper flashlight, a high, highly engineered, um, it was like 80 bucks, but I had, I had some rewards to help me out with the cost. Like it is the best flashlight I've ever owned. And I'm just having such a blast. Nice. Yeah. And so I just realized now that like lighters, flashlights, the fidget stuff, the fidget toys, the highly engineered fidget toys, like it's also addicting. It leads into wallets. It leads into boots. It's, it's all interconnected. You know what I mean? It, it, it's I don't, I don't get it. Like, I don't understand why, but you're right. It's, it's the same scene. Yeah. Like, why is a fidget spinner person into boots? They're totally different, but it's the same guy. Like, yeah. he likes knives and probably, honestly, I'm kind of not into guns. Like, I'm kind of scared of guns because I'm a wuss. But, like, most people that are into my products are really into guns. And and because they like shooting, but they also really like the engineering. I think, it, it's, I think that's what it is. It's, like, people like to see, like, how things are done. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I think that's part of it. Yeah. Mechanical engineering and how it, how it applies to your lifestyle, how you can utilize it. Like, 
you know, I'm into watches too. I started out loving watches first before I loved yeah. anything else. I was into, you know, mechanical watches and things like that, but those are just too expensive to keep buying. But right. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Watches led to boots, boots led to other EDC type stuff. I love copper. I love brass. Anything. Yes. Like yes. That. Dude. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I agree. Yeah. I like copper pens a lot. Uh, Skip is Skip gives me a lot of gifts of like he loves pens, so he yeah. sends he get, like every year he gives me like a pretty sweet pen. This year he gave me a pretty cool copper pen. For my my path was like you know I worked at the tannery, so like I saw where all the leather was going. So like it was like leather boots and shoes, and then I really got into raw denim. Okay. That's kind of like where it end, like in wallets, obviously, but like that's kind of where I ended ended it like and everything else is just like given to me like this guy gave me some amazing flashlights like i'm kind of not a flashlight guy but like i super appreciate it and like um i don't know if you recall there's a, a website they're called drop now but it used to be called mass drop like they used to have such good stuff and they kind of bailed on it and like all they do now is like audio everything they used to have like really good like desk like tops and stuff um that, yeah so I was kind of into that and then, then they dropped the ball and they like, didn't, they didn't care about me as much as I cared about them. <laughs> right. Urban EDC.com. They still do check it out. Yeah. And so does um, cool material.com cool material. They all, okay. I'd say they're the, the urban EDC's number one competitor, but I'm with you. I used to follow mass drop as well and they used to do an excellent job, but, but yeah, like you said, something happened. Now it's just, awful. I got the inside scoop is their buyers. Um, Basically, they got new owners. Okay. And the guy that the, the one of the buyers that started it there, uh, we were like one of the first brands on Mastrop, like ever. And uh, one of the first buyers, his name was Ian, and he did such a good job curating their their like like shoes and even the audio stuff. He was just like such a good buyer, and curated it in like such a appropriate way where it was like this is special. And you would go there like every time I'd open a newsletter or like go on their website, I'd be like, wow, that's something I hadn't seen before. But now it's like, hey, here's the same headphones you've seen 20 times. And by the way, here's 50 more headphones you've seen 20 times. So I kind of miss like I wish they were doing more curation, but I think they figured out that they could make millions of dollars just selling headphones. Um, so they kind of bailed on everybody else. Um, although like. I bet you if I emailed them right now, they would sell some stuff for me, but like, that's not where they're focused. It's, it's more, mostly about audio. Yeah. They, they've shifted, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Urban, urban EDC supply.com. They're still very much in the niche. Smoke. I'm looking at it. Yeah. They, they sell the, um, what is it? One thing I haven't done with EDC stuff are the beads like mm, dude, for bracelets. Um, they're for para, like paracord. Beads. Yeah, they're like people to tie like, to the end of knives or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, and they'll be like two hundred and fifty dollar bead for your paracord. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's nuts. <laughs> I, love, I love that people are creating stuff that are that's worth that much money. That oh, that's so funny. They have a product here that I made a bunch of years ago, which is like a key head wrapped in leather. Oh, cool! No kidding. It's cool. I, I used to proto these. It's funny to see somebody else had the same idea. Yeah. It's like it's like that though. Like nobody can really say like they created a thing. It's like mm -hmm. stuff is like kind of out there. <laughs> you know, it's like hard to be original about anything. That that's so true. That's so true. And and speaking of, I don't mean to go down a whole other rabbit hole, but I've toyed with the idea of creating some of my own. Leatherworks, and you mentioned that you're into video games. Have have you played the Uncharted series? Um, yeah, um, on that TV behind me there, I have like an old PS3, and my buddy lent me Uncharted One and Two. Oh. My wife plays them more than I have, cool. but uh, I heard they're like really great, especially the new ones. Yes, they're amazing. They're very much like a rehashing of like a retelling of sort of Indiana Jones type of a feel. Yes, very original, but indie but, boot. Yeah, the indie exactly. <laughs> the the lead character he wears a a shoulder saddle or a shoulder harness for his guns, and it looks really cool. It, like it's 
it's like four straps of leather that intersect in his back. Yeah. And got like a gun here and then like a pouch here. I don't know what he carries in it, but I, I did some digging and I see some gun sellers or some like gun supply shops. They make something similar. It, they call it a shoulder, a shoulder harness for your gun. Right. Um, but they don't use like Horween materials. They're just using like standard bridal leathers, I guess. Um, it's not super top quality, like something from Horween. So I was thinking like, oh, I have an idea. I could make I could make something that I want, you know. But then I just saw that um, Rose Anvil. Yep. Are you familiar with him? Yeah. Yeah. He has. He's a, a buddy. Okay. Okay. You know him. Cool. He's, he's a he's a fan and a really good guy, and okay. I'm a fan of his too. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. He, he's an awesome guy. He, he makes some awesome content. I didn't realize he has a shop and he, he makes what's called a camera harness. Yes. Basically the same exact thing that I was thinking about making. <laughs> I just learned about this, like literally this week. I think that's like his main product actually. Okay. That, yeah. That harness. Yes. And if you're into gun holsters, there is some Horween gun holster stuff. Uh, there's a company called Galco. That makes it out of the horsehide strips, and they're like wet molded to form around whatever gun you have. Uh, so you might want to check out Galco if you're if you're into guns. Okay. G A L C O. Okay, I got it up now. <clears throat> well, I'll I'll look at that later. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to to rip that off too because like it's such a brilliant idea. It's just like yeah. I don't understand enough about guns to do it. Right. Like right. I would I kind of wish i would uh i'm just too much of a baby to but yeah. yeah like they and they do a good job like galco's like they've been around for a long time and uh well i'm, I'm, I'm glad the hardest you. thing is cool like there's a lot of camera dudes that um like wedding photographers you'll see it where they have to have multiple cameras they'll like strap multi-cams uh to their sides like that Mm -hmm. and it's more comfortable to spread out that pressure over more surface area kind of like the herbie <laughs> right like right. instead of just putting on one shoulder you're like spreading it out yeah it's brilliant it's a good idea it is it, it is brilliant and and i have a, a backpack made by somebody on etsy that's made out of pure horween leather it's it's brown chrome excel but it's also the straps are made of X essex and the mm. system that straps the the straps to you know the shoulder straps to you is very much it looks like one of these shoulder harnesses it's very much like a similar system and uh and yeah that, that's, that's does it have like a crossbar that the straps hang on or um it, it all sort of intersects in a brass ring so like there's interesting four straps that come together into a brass ring the brass ring is like sort of centered on your back or something yeah okay that exactly. makes sense yeah, that's cool. I didn't, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, it's it's super cool. Yeah, I'll I'll send you some pictures of it. Um, yeah, it's it's my favorite backpack by far. Um, and I can't find the lady that made it for me. And uh, it's not too heavy. I, I've sort of, consciously navigated away from all leather bags because like yeah, the bags that I've had that are all leather are just like, some of them are great. Like I actually like some briefcases that I've used. Mm -hmm. but like an all leather backpacks like a little heavy and yeah. like an all leather duffel is like a little heavy i mean it it's is not not ideal but right. we're actually we're we're trying to develop some uh some bags to like combat that a bit but yeah cool. so yours is all chrome xl it's got to be heavy it kind of reminds me of the jacket chat we were having too it's like that's why i was asking it's like it's a little heavy like maybe it's a little uncomfortable like i don't know if i don't want to walk around with like a 20 pound leather sack without anything on, in it <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> you know? true that's that's true and i'll tell you what like i'm with you it's there are some downsides to having a bag and made out of chrome xl first off like you're saying it's heavy second off um i you know i had one of the rivets pop on me because mm -hmm. you can't overload it with with gear you know you one can't, of the shoulder strap rivets yeah yeah it just popped out luckily it oh, sucks yeah yeah L luckily my cobbler was able of all you know of all people my cobbler knows how to do a rivet so he he did one on there and it, it's held up since then but uh but yeah the other thing is is like um yeah it just it's yes it's heavy it doesn't breathe well and then it's hard to get on to like it's not yeah. easy to get 
on like to get it on like i have to make sure that the straps are are straight because otherwise yeah. the, i don't know there are some i gotcha yeah yeah i mean i'll tell you something it, until last year i was using a like uh corporate gift style bag from wilson it was probably like a five dollar nylon bag yeah. that uh that they gave us at the tanner because they're customers and i wore that like i don't care like i guess honestly like and it lasted like it didn't break and a lot of compartments that i liked um but it was like a five dollar or whatever and it was light like and there were a few years where i would bring are these like multiple thousand dollar like leather bags that were super nice that I didn't buy because I couldn't afford it. But like Skip would give me like his old bag. And it was like this amazing, like amazing, like uh, perfectly crafted full leather thing. It's pretty, pretty awesome, but like too heavy. Um, So like I, as much as I love leather, like I see that there are some downsides, but it, it really comes down to like, from, I guess with your shoes is a little different, but like, for me, it's like, what are the things that you're going to touch? Like, any like a handle is really good for leather or like a shoulder pad maybe might be really good for leather but maybe like a whole body like again as much as i love it we don't need everything like my desk is not leather like it might be kind of cool but you know like it doesn't have to be sometimes you need a balance of stuff yeah that's a great point yeah not everything needs to be made of leather you're 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 completely (laughs) correct on that or (laughs) copper or brass like we like also (laughs) although like a copper desk here would be so cool. Oh man, it would be <laughs> leather working. It would be yeah. just best for leather working. <laughs> Actually, really, like we were talking about rivets. I really love copper rivets. Yeah, I think they do. look cool. Copper and brass rivets are the best. Oh man, so cool. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, I have this belt here from Isaac at Pigeon Tree Crafting. Raw Japanese brass buckle there. Wow, uh, is it super heavy? Yes, very heavy. <laughs> And that's what I partly love about the belt is that it reminds me that it's on me. <laughs> is that like a one and three quarter inch belt or like a two inch belt? Um, it's yeah, I think it's I think it's, it's super wide. Yeah, I think it's one and a half. I think it is. I think it's one and a half. But this is like a twelve ounce leather. You can see. Oh how man, thick it is. That's yeah, a, it, a chunk. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> this is from JNFJ uh, Baker Tannery in, in the UK. Um, and and this is actually made for the Japanese market, so it's hard to get in the U.S. So he was lucky to be able to source this stuff. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I love it. But yeah, I, I like heavy stuff, like I said. So the bag, I like that it's heavy, but when it comes to traveling, it's not the best to travel. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. It's, you know, and the other thing is different leathers are good for different things. So there, there's certain leathers that are good for bags and other leather leathers that are better for boots, you know, so I'm not, I'm not versed enough to know the differences, but (laughs) no, I mean, that is something that I think about a lot is I find Chrome Excel to be nearly ideal for a shoe. And I know your buddy, uh, Jake, I think it's Jake. (laughs) Yeah. Jake. Yeah. Oh, Jake, we got to talk, man. But yeah, I mean, also like, dude, I get it. Like you don't like it. It's fine. Like I, I actually really respected his like going out there to make that video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's great, but like, honestly on a jacket for me, it seems too much. It seems too heavy, maybe a little too firm just cause it is a little bit too thick and like, it's kind of oily and greasy. So you might get some color rub off. That's like, if you're, you can't wear white clothes or like there's some issues uh with all all others um right and yeah like uh <laughs> when we first started ashland it was we had like one order that was like massively huge for these japanese customers mm-hmm. and uh i was talking to this graphic designer that made our logo and i was like you know i'm thinking about making some leather like sheaths uh instead of putting these in cloth bags to send to japan like we'll make these cord of in wallets and like put them in leather like pouches and she said to me she's like you know like sometimes like you you don't need all leather (laughs) and and i was like that's it's actually kind of a really good point it's like you need a balance of everything in life 
Uh, and as much as I love leather, um, it can get me into trouble loving it too much because uh, there's other yeah. materials that might serve a better function. That's true. Like, like you want your boots made out of leather, but you don't want your pants made out of leather. <laughs> well, it <laughs> depends on if you're into Judas Priest or not. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <And> in fact, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I'm with you. There, there is a balance. There, there needs to be a balance. And, uh, and yeah, I think, I think a lot of us are just trying to push and find where that balance is. Um, for example, I have a, I have a, a, a guitar strap from hmm. uh, the guitar center and I saw it and I noticed immediately that it's an aniline. Uh, it's similar to a Chrome Excel, but it's really, a oh, is that a PRS? Oh man. Yeah, it is. <laughs> nice dude. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is my baby, um, but don't let don't let the guitar fool you. I'm 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 a terrible musician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, it's got a little pull up on it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me see if I could get that on the camera. So, yeah, when I squeeze it, you can see that oh, it wow. lightens up. And this was just a twenty dollars strap, but um, yeah, I mean, you can make. You can make cheap. I mean, I don't know if it's bad or not, but you can make an inexpensive pull-up leather. Right, right. Yeah, and it, it's got the it's got the rough out on the other side. You can see there. I don't see anything wrong with that. Right? Yeah, it, it's it's great. I mean, it's it's actually where the the part that I have problems with on my straps are the uh, part where it goes around the peg uh, that attaches to the body. Like sometimes okay. they're too uh, flexible and like. I had one that broke on me uh, and sometimes they're just like too loose and you, you fall off. Right. That's the, to me, that's like the only performance thing you need on a strap. Cool like PRS a, though, man. Congrats. Oh, thank you. Thank you. How yeah. long have you had that one for? Um, I've had this about, I want to say since 2012. Yeah. It's, it's something I like love a single cut. Uh, that's pretty sweet. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, this was my one treat to myself when I said, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna branch out from the acoustic and I'm gonna get, you know, pretty pretty nice uh you know I just uh I just ordered a new guitar, uh, a new bass guitar. Uh so there's that one behind me. Um Oh yeah, I see that. And the band so that that guitar was made by a company called Key uh Carvin and they rebranded to a company called Kiesel. And that model was like a signature model for a, a bass player that no longer endorses that brand. And the band I play in uh, has like some popularity and we would play music videos. And the owner for that company, um, we sent them the video like, hey, can you guys post this on your social media or whatever? And the owner was like, no, because like we hate your bass player's bass. Like, I guess there's some bad blood between like that endorser. So he was like, Hey, uh, send us your base and we'll make you a custom one. And I was like, guys, I like this base. Like I want to keep it, but I also like want our videos to be like published by you. Uh, I'll just support you guys. So like, I bought another base from them. Um, but I'm really into the woods in the same way I'm into leather. So I've got like a really cool, well, we'll see what it looks like, but, they do uh, semi-custom everything. So you can choose like the body wood and like the top wood. So I picked a uh, Buckeye Burl and they do, they have like a private stock of their own where the owner has like his special woods. And I was like, I'll pay more for that. Give me the crazy one. So I should have this like crazy Buckeye Burl guitar coming soon. That hopefully sounds better than, I love that bass. It's like the best bass I've ever played. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so hopefully it sounds better than that. So that's why, like, I I could have made money by like just trading it, but like I don't know, like I got a couple bucks and I can support these guys and and I love this thing. <laughs> so it was, it was one of those. Also, yeah. the other problem is is this new one's headless, which is like kind of it's like too cool for me, in the same way that the leather jacket's too cool. Yeah, uh, I hear you. So I hear you. We'll see. Man, we'll see. that's amazing i didn't realize you were in a band what what band are you are you with i'm in a band called outrun the sunlight and we okay. play instrumental progressive metal basically so i was a fan of this band uh before i joined them and i 
Chris. I've always, you know, I've been a musician my whole life and um, I've always really liked pretty hardcore, like metal stuff, I like Metallica. And then that sort of opened the doors to like a little bit more intense stuff. And the, the older I get, the like more aggressive <laughs> things tend yeah. to sound to me. Cool. And, and being like with the musician, like musical training, I tend to like really technical stuff. Okay. Um, so I like a chant, like a audible challenge cool. <laughs> is how I feel. Uh, so anyways, I was into these guys and then I saw like I was following them as a fan and uh, they're local to Chicago and I saw they needed a bass player. So I auditioned and they they got me. And if you want to if you want to see me play that bass, uh, there's a bunch of me playing on their uh, like we just did a live uh, set on YouTube that you might that might be one of the first things that pops up. Uh, if you search outrun the sunlight. Oh man, that sounds amazing. I am on it. So, yeah. So if you're into, if you're into, um, it's kind of unique. It's, there's no singing. Um, uh, so it's a lot about the textures and, and the rhythms and stuff, which I'm super into. Um, cool. it's very progressive, <laughs> okay. pretty heavy at times. That's awesome. Uh, That's yeah. awesome. That's good to hear because I have a very like esoteric, taste in music and in fact i have just a, the hardest time finding music that i like and so lately like some of my unboxing videos i get trolled on them because <laughs> you know like I, I i found this um i found this italian band called aim to head official and they do a lot of huh. synth wave it's like oh yeah. dude i love synth wave aim to head yeah aim to head yeah official yeah they're, they're an italian band and they kind of take from the blade runner Dark Techno EBM. I don't yeah. know what that is. Industrial live stream? Yeah. What's EBM? I don't know. <laughs> it's like EDM, but with like, it's, it's instead of dance, it's in electronic beat music, maybe? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. That's beat. cool, man. Yeah, I, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm all about like the dark synth wave stuff. I've been. Yes. In, yeah, yeah. Yes, me too. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. We I'll, our I'll Spotify and just type in like electro, uh, like synth wave or whatever. Okay. There's okay. like pretty good, pretty good playlists on Spotify. There are some amazing ones. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Dang. It sounds like we have way more to talk about. <laughs> well, we should do more videos. Yeah, we should. We should. Absolutely. We need to, because there's clearly more that we have to delve into. <laughs> but no, I, I, have I, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe this is the EDC scene is also into electro synth wave. <laughs> they, they are, they're secretly like th this is all interlinked, you know, interconnected. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I have just the hardest time finding music that I like. Like I, nothing mainstream interests me even a little bit. So you might, you might be into our band. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, I have it up here in my Google search, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to it as soon as soon as we're done here. <laughs> so I'm sure. I'm sure. You know. I mean, I'm a fan of yours anyway, so you know, I'll appreciate it. I, I could almost guarantee, is you know, I, I know I know that you are an artist at heart. So whatever. Yeah. I mean, I. I mean, you could probably cut this out of the video here, but I also have a solo project uh, that I you might like. It's pretty electronic, uh, but it's also pretty metal. If you look up Asleep in the Stars. Okay. Um, I'm on all the all the platforms, but let's see. I'm not, I'd like never promote it. Asleep in the Stars band. Yeah, there you go. Asleep in the Stars bandcamp.com is, so I have like a, a long play and then an EP. Uh, that's like a little bit more of like an electronic sort of metal. It's a lot of synths, not in synths in the way that like that EDM is. Uh -huh. It's more of like, it's kind of brutal, <laughs> like okay. uh, pretty progressive synth. I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it because All right, man. I, I like, I like the, I like the mellow synth wave, synth wave, but if I'm being honest, I like that a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I like the darker synth wave, the dark synth. I, I like, you know, the more aggressive it gets, the better. I don't know. It's just something I just, it resonates with me. <laughs> cool. Yeah. You might, you might not be into it, but it's, this is less about like a pulsing beat and oh. the stuff I do is a little bit more like a, like imagine if rush was like very, 
like in the future. <laughs> I know like very crazy and like a lot heavier. Yeah. That's kind of what I, and it's a lot about rhythms is what I'm into. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, so Let me know if you like it. <laughs> I'm gonna check it I'm out. I'm trying Thanks. to downplay it. I'm trying to downplay it so you don't have high hopes. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Don't worry. Like nobody I talk to ever resonates with what I say about music anyway. So no, I'm 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 very I'm very interested because I feel like you're into some, you know, some stuff that I would be interested in. So <laughs> it's great, dude, man. It's been a pleasure. Um yeah, so we'd love to love to chat about anything in Yes. Yeah, yeah. When I'm looking to get new boots and stuff, I might have to pick your brain to hook me up to tell oh, me like what to be, what to be looking out for. Absolutely. My friend. Hey, anytime, anytime. This has just been the best talk, Phil. Yes. So much. It's been an honor, a pleasure. And uh, let's do this again, my friend. And this is the, <laughs> this is the most I've drank in like yeah. a year. <laughs> so thank you yeah. for that too. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I'm glad we we're able to toast to your. Yes. To your and cheers. Cheers, man. Cheers. Happy uh, pandemic. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> and, and, Congratulations again on the on the channel. Oh, thank you so much. That is, that is a it. monumental, you know, uh, uh, celebration and and milestone in your life. So <laughs> yes, even if I'm not sleeping, it's all good. And by okay. the way, this is me without sleep. So imagine okay. what how great I would be if I was well rested. <laughs> <laughs> you're very articulate for somebody who hasn't slept i'll say that <laughs> I'm work, I'm, i've been uh working two jobs for well not recently but working two jobs for like a bunch of years so i figured it out a little bit <laughs> yeah you have you have you, you're you're an expert sir <laughs> all right good stuff well phil again thank you so much and uh yeah let's do this again sometime soon my friend <laughs> absolutely i appreciate you man so much thanks for hanging out Yes. Yes. Likewise. Thank you, sir. All right. Until next time. Right. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Yeah. Okay, bye bye.